Yeah, we went to the University of Iowa, but um, we were doing so many films like outside of school that we just like took a communication degree and decided let's just continue making films on our own and, and keep doing feature films for like no money in Iowa. And um, you know, as, as Brian said, that was kind of our film school years. The the script writing process for Quiet Place. I mean, we wrote this in like four months and then took it out directly to Platinum Dunes, who came on board immediately as producers, and then they took that directly into Paramount. And, and they had Michael Bay calling the, the head of the studio immediately and being like, you have to make this movie. Like, why aren't we making this movie yet? We've had so many experiences the other way, where like a movie languishes in development for years and years and years, and um, A Quiet Place was lightning fast. Studio bought it right away. Two months of rewrites with their notes, not even maybe, and greenlit. I was actually just, Getting ready to do Jack Ryan, I was only a few weeks away from shooting, I think. And uh, the guys at Platinum Dunes said, would you ever act in a genre film? Because, you know, they had seen 13 Hours, obviously, and they liked it. And they said, there's this part that we think you'd be right for. And I said, oh, that's cool. I said, I don't really do genre. I'm a scaredy cat. And I, and I said, but if it's a cool idea, maybe I'd think about it. And they said, um, well, it's about a family that can't make any noise, and you have to figure out why. And I went, damn you, that's the best one-liner I've ever heard. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So they sent me the original script by Beck and Woods, and... What happened was we really, we had just, Emily and I had just had, Emily, not me, but had just had our second daughter. And um, I was in that wide open, new parent, terrified, nervous, all of it. So I was a wide open nerve of emotion. And so I don't think there's a better audience member for that first script than me. I was ready to cry, ready to feel everything. And that new parenthood thing is what I said, if I, if I took on this project, I know exactly what to do with it because we were liter literally living through it. I think we started with a 30-day schedule, you know, for this, and you know, that's a, it's a very big feeling movie. You'd think we had, you know, six months to shoot it. We had 30 days to shoot it, and we wrapped November 1st, and the movie will come out April 9th. So it's, I'm terrible at math, but it's like five and a half, <laughs> five months basically. I didn't storyboard at all. And in hindsight, it's one of the things I probably should have done. <laughs> and the next one I probably will more, more clearly because to me, when I got up to the location and it was, it was my intention, but my production designer was really the champion for stay in one location. And it was this thing of not only for ease of the crew, but there really is a, it sounds like I'm in a Cameron Crowe movie, but it's true. There is a vibe to staying in one place for the entire shoot and having people live on this farm and arrive to work on this farm. And it was really cool. It worked. Everybody felt connected to this space in a way that was really genuine and really unique. And so for me, it was, you know, uh, being up there became a huge character in the movie and, and something that we needed to, to, to have and to, to be up there in upstate New York was perfect. The truth of the matter is, absolutely I wanted Emily to play this part. But we've actually, not even um, you know, for any purpose or reason, we've kept our, our careers very separate. And that's only for my own personal enjoyment. Meaning, I got to see Sicario for the first time rather than read the script and talk about it with her. I just want to be a fan of her work. So we keep things separately because I really can't wait to see her movies. And then on this one, I just thought, oh, you know, she's busy and she's doing all the stuff. She was just finishing Mary Poppins. I said, you know, she'll probably need a break after that. And she had heard all the ideas and she was very excited. Like I said, we had just had our second child and there was a lot going on. And then one day she just said, so you think I can read the script? Do you feel like you're in a place you can show it to me? And I said, yeah, she had recommended other actresses. So we had never really had the conversation. And then she read it and she came over to me on a plane and she looked like she was gonna be sick. And before I could reach for the barf bag, she said, no one else can do this part. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, I have to do this role. And I, I genuinely was gobsmacked. And I said, are you saying what I think you're saying right now? It was like she was proposing to me or something. And then I said, and she said, I, will, will you let me do this role? And I went, yes. Wait, yes, I will, let you, <laughs> I will let you be in this movie. And it was the greatest compliment of my career. I've said it time and time again, but truly, it was the greatest compliment of my career because I don't think I know anyone who has a better taste level, a better choice level of projects. And I knew, knowing her as well as I do, I knew that she wouldn't do this as a favor to me or something that would make my career better. It had to be for her. And I, I, I admire that so much that she said, no, no, this is a part I have to play. And I said, why? And she said, because it's the most terrifying part I'll ever play. And I said, why? And she said, because I usually have to pretend about what I'm scared about, like in Girl on the Train or something like that, you know, pretend to be an alcoholic. 
this is what I'm actually scared of. Protecting my kids is what I live through every day. Obviously not to the extent that it happens in this movie, but that genuine fear of will you be able to protect your kids at any expense is what I really uh, fear. And it, it, it was the, the collaboration. So then to get back to the other story is she said the night before, are you scared? And I went terrified. She went, oh, good, me too. And I said, why are we so scared? And it's because we each had our own process. And we weren't sure how they were going to align. And I said, you know what, let's just do day by day, uh, scene by scene. She said, yeah, that's fair. And one of the first scenes was the bathtub scene. And I remember Rob Marshall saying to me, you know, you'll get to finally see what, what your wife can do. And I said, yeah, I'm a huge fan. And he said, no, 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 you'll see. And I said, I know, I'm her biggest fan. He said, nope, not till you're in the room when she does what she does will you know how good an actress she really is. And I thought, wow, that's an amazing compliment. And sure enough, that take in the bathtub is one take, the only one take exists because I was just blown away. As soon as she did it, everybody in the room froze. And you can hear on the dailies me going, that's lunch? And we all just went to lunch because she just can do that. She's that good. She can just harness it, nail it, knows exactly what the scene needs. She's the most talented, professional, and uh, beloved person I've ever worked with. I, w I did audition for the role. Um, they were I saw a search for a young woman, uh, 10 to 15 years old. So I decided to audition. I sent my audition uh, scene, and uh, they told me, you know, look at the camera and cry. That was the d those were the directions. Uh, your father is leaving. It was actually very hard to pull up that emotion. And another time, I w had to uh, sit and eat, but not listen to my parents at the dinner table. J so and I had to be physical. I had to physically, you know. Uh, throw this something on the couch there were those kinds of directions and that were a, a challenge but so I sent that audition in I read the script I was really in love with the script very fascinating it's an amazing story I was really mesmerized with the character the setting and how it f played out at the end so I was very uh, I wanted to get the role and then I got a few I, a few weeks later I got an email from John saying he was very impressed come come be part of our movie. We'd be happy to have you as part of our, our crew uh, and actors. That's th I was very glad to hear that. So it's not just about actors talking to each other for him. You know, he, he is one of those sort of multifaceted people who, with everything that he approaches, and he's always trying to better everything. He's got that sort of tenacity and drive, and I think that this multifaceted job of being a director, especially in something as um, sort of ambitious and demanding as this film was, kind of fit him like a glove. And he, he was, it was extraordinary watching him in an avenue that I hadn't seen him in before, because in a way, as much as people, for example, love The Office and it's meant a lot to them, like he could do that standing on his head. And like this was something that he'd never explored before, that intimidated him, that was new. And it was sort of thrilling seeing him in this new, wearing this new hat, you know? Well, it was funny when um, Michael Bay saw the film, he was watching that scene and he was like, you know, dissecting it and it's about the sound and the music and he's got issues with it and he goes, God, she knows how to hold a gun. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that was his compliment, I guess, but um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I've held a shotgun before, you know? <laughs>